Hey folks, my name is Provis, and I've got something very special indeed for you today. Hearts of Iron 4 Old World Blues Ashes to Embers, also known as the big 5.0 update that we've all been looking forward to. The devs actually reached out and asked if I would like an early build of this upcoming update. Upcoming update, that's the right English words, I'm pretty sure. And obviously I said yes, I love this mod, I always have loved this mod. So getting to see it a little bit before anyone else, now that's just pretty cool. Now I don't know exactly when this is going to become available to the common masses. My understanding is they're still targeting a late February release, but the exact date, don't totally know. Also, because this is an early build, be aware that some things might get tweaked, there might be a couple of bugs, hopefully nothing that we can't overcome. There are a lot of nations who are impacted in this area, specifically if I kind of circle this zone right here. This whole area is basically going to be new content, which is kind of a lot. On a personal level though, the dev I was talking to recommended that I try out the Northern Cons for my first run here. Now, I don't know a lot about the cons. I believe that there's some lore about them in the New Vegas game, but why they're up over here and what's their story, don't totally know. But if this dev knows me at all, they'll know that I really like going for some early aggression. And cons kind of sound like they might go conquering people. So we'll give this one a shot. Of course, if you've never watched me play Old World Blues before, I'm going to go ahead and warn you, the first one or two episodes of the series usually have a lot of reading, various exposition and backstory and stuff, because I personally think that the creative lore behind the story is one of its strongest aspects, and I want to make sure that it gets the proper amount of attention. All right, who are we led by? Amgalen? Amglan? I'm not sure how you say that, but okay. This character used to be a playboy punk went and joined the Followers of the Apocalypse, now is currently traveling through Old Wyoming. All right, so he's a de facto chief of this group, which seems kind of decentralized. He might be a bit of a reformer. Maybe, we'll see. For our national spirits, we have Rowdy Cons. This looks terrible. We're gonna have to centralize and unify people. Let the Ranger lead the way. All right, not bad. Weekly manpower? Not a lot, but okay. It's gonna be uh, removed in a few months, whether I like it or not. And then we're already a Follower of the Apocalypse. I don't know what the implications are of all that, but fine. Decisions, we've got something unique here, hold on. Preemptive strike, wild folk like the cons aren't peaceful neighbors, my friends. See how they plant no seeds, raise no livestock. When they get hungry, they'll come knocking on our doors. In 89 days, the Baron's Airy over here, this southern neighbor, is going to attack me. So we're going to war soon, whether I like it or not. Okay, see, that's good to know. Also, con authority. Control over the cons is tumultuous and uncertain. Within a few years, the situation will change, and there'll be an opportunity to settle on a path for the future. If someone's support is at least substantial, when the time comes, they have a chance at leadership. Only time will tell who will lead the cons to their future in Wyoming. We have Settling Down, Old Ways, and New Conant. So what can we take out of that exactly? What does that mean? Settling down seems reformist and maybe we'll have a chance to build up proper infrastructure and technology. So kind of maybe reform into a more classic play style. Old ways, I don't really know what their old ways were, but I'm guessing raiding. New Conant might also do that or it'll be, again, kind of a reformist path. I'm not sure. I kind of like the idea of playing this game very differently and going for kind of a raiding focus, but... I don't know what my options are yet. So let's go and go to the national focus tree. I left my heart in California will be the first one. And then as far as technology, um, we'll go for a lot of our... Hold on, what is this? A tribal unique technology tree? Has this always been a thing and I've just always played too much of the Brotherhood of Steel to even know? So it looks like we can't do this right now because I don't have the tribal nation technology. Maybe that'll happen once I get a bit more refined and reformed i don't know we have terrible tech levels across the board this is going to be a rough game i am not accustomed to playing with weak people like this as far as doctrines i feel like if we're going to be a tribe we have to go for asymmetric warfare right because we're not going to have proper technology and industry we have to use unconventional means of winning that doesn't feel good but you know what all right fine it's okay i'm good with it Sometimes you like just kind of changing the game up a little bit, and uh, I don't know. Maybe it's going to be a totally new way of playing the game, and I fall in love with it. Parting of the ways. Our history is one of dark deeds, often rewarded with near extinction. 
though few of us choose to recognize it. In California, our people nearly met their end twice at the hands of those who now rule the West. Those who survived our second defeat were scattered to the winds, and only the actions of two men stopped the new cons from dissolving into nothing in the following days. One such man became known as Papa Khan, who gathered the bulk of the survivors, giving them new strength and remaking them into the Great Khans. They traveled east into Nevada, where they settled in the Mojave Wasteland and established themselves as a mighty tribe once more. The other man was named Amgalan, Amgalan, Amgal... I don't know, I'm just gonna go with Amgalan from here on out, but it might be wrong. And he gathered both survivors and hopefuls, trying to hold them both together. His group was much smaller, and were aided by a group known as the Followers of the Apocalypse. Given food, water, and medical attention by these outsiders, Amgalan felt obliged to return the favor in some way. So when the followers plans their expedition to the northeast, he and his splinter group of the Khans walked with them on the road. They still called themselves the New Khans, and they looked southward towards their ever more distant kin with rebellion in their hearts, a regretful longing, and stoic indifference. I kind of feel like maybe I should go for either settling down or the New Khanate. Because the old ways feels like if I wanted to do that, then maybe I should have just played as the Great Khans. And if that's the case, do I want to get support for settling down, or do I want a lot of political power? Um, I kind of feel like maybe I want to I want to try for the new Conant, but just in case, let's go for Rebellion in their hearts. And see what that does as far as settling down. Alright, so they now have modest support. So here's the thing, usually in Hearts of Iron 4, you want ideological hegemony. So I don't know if maybe this is going to come back to bite me and we have like a Civil War event later on. I don't know, but we'll see. I haven't paid a decision yet. I'm kind of hoping the story is going to reveal itself just a bit more. A new con indeed. The road that the new cons and followers walked was long and winding, passing through many strange and dangerous lands. They journeyed under the suspicious and watchful glares of rangers, through the territories of those who walked on tar, and into the settlements of those who spoke for the gods of the heaven above and the steam below. Where the followers were not welcome, Amgalon and his companions would step in to intimidate or fight them out of danger. The two groups became friendly enough along the way, but it was Amgalon himself who would begin to pay closer attention to the words and deeds of the followers. While the rest of his clan drank or brawled in the night, Amgalon would speak with the followers or read the collection of books and holotapes they carried. He began to question whether it was the land or the cons that needed a change. It was a slow and quiet change within him, but as the expedition reached the far-off lands that had been the Wyoming and Montana in the days before the bombs, Amgalon was a changed man. Those around him noticed the change as well, but the rest of the new cons were less convinced by the words of peace and healing, and continued much as they did before. Before the end of the expedition, they had gathered... Okay, so we could go for support of the new conets and get infantry equipment. We could get some manpower, or we could get secrets of uh, weapon crafts. Manpower would be good. Guns would also be good. All right, let's play our options here and go for support for the new Conant as well. All right, we're just going to boost them both a little bit. I don't know. I haven't done this. I tried to go into the semi-blind because I think that's half of the fun, and the dev didn't tell me to go for a very specific path, okay? So I don't know what's going to be good. I'm, I'm hedging my bets just a little bit. New homes and new families. It was in these sprawling and healthier lands that the followers began to build themselves an outpost, one from which they could reach out to the surrounding tribes and townships. When they stopped, we did as well, putting down new roots and making a home for ourselves. The ground upon which we stand now had been loosely settled by scattered ranchers and tribes who either moved south or joined us upon our arrival. Since those first days, we have dispersed across the flats and prairies into small groups to hunt and take what we need. Though Amgalon still stands as our leader, his authority is only loosely acknowledged, so each family of Khans largely does as they see fit. One of the tribes pushed southward by our arrival was known as the Sun Gazers. They left without making a fuss, taking their herds towards the area of the Baron. Their eyes were still skyward when Bailey decided the herds and fields would see better use under his own watch. I'm assuming that that is the Baron. The poor bastards didn't stand a chance and were wiped out. One of the daughters of the tribe journeyed to us, a blood-soaked and grim-faced woman named Essen, looking for a new home. A single new recruit would not normally be very noteworthy, but Amgalon immediately took an interest in her, calling the woman a wildfire in the waiting, a true con at heart, or a wolf without a pack. Uh, I believe this is my field marshal. And she's already okay at things like some attack and skill, uh, you know, logistics and stuff like that. So I think maybe we go ahead and get some defense. That doesn't seem like a bad play. And then we have a choice. We can go for cooperating with the followers. 
We can go for our ancestors' ways. One of the two. Let's see. This is going to lead toward, I assume, the old ways. Yup. Or we could go for... Doo -doo -doo -doo, settling down. Okay. And a way of getting rid of the rowdy cons. Actually, looks like that's the case in both routes. So the question is, what do we want here? Chem experiments? I don't know if I like that. So yeah, probably would want to go for cooperation with the followers. There's also Alone in the Mountains for more population, consumer goods, and stability. Some workshops, infrastructure, construction speed, and so on. I imagine a lot of this is important, but I need something that's going to help me win this war. And then we have the Khan's Warriors. More war supports, army experience, and weapon research for a bunch of different things. Also, some arms workshops. I feel like maybe we want to go for cooperating with the followers. This can also lead to some arms workshops as well as civilian workshops and stuff. I don't know if that's the right call, but okay. Oh, new event I was not planning on. The final breath. Prolonged rooted tradition. When the sun rose and the dawn, the sun gazers stepped out of their tents. Those on patrol lowered their arms and everyone paid respect as their guiding light rose from its slumber. Oh, I'm sorry. Are we, are we, are we praise the sun? Praise the sun? Is that what we do now? Midday would call their attention, an hour for prayers with eyes skybound, and when dust settled, everyone bowed their hands, wishing their great sun goodbye as it left them for the night. For a large portion of her life, Essen knew only the sun. She was born under its loving embrace. She worked tirelessly to impress when it surveyed her people during the day, and under cold nights, she would watch the stars, the servants of the sun, as she waited for its return. But when passing faces slowly dwindled to blurred features, when her own hands became hard to recognize, she began to wonder if she'd wronged it, her people, or anyone else for that matter. Are you saying you guys literally stared at the sun? Because that is a great way to destroy your eyesight. No wonder you guys couldn't fight back. You couldn't see nothing. The aftermath with the Baron had proved her suspicions. She managed to survive a grenade blast by positioning. A taller sun gazer stood in front of her, taking the brunt of the shrapnel. And when Essen had finally mustered her strength, both of will and might, to crawl out from the bodies and rubble that toppled her, she was alone. She was the last. Slick in warm blood and soot, the sun was unbearable and sweltering. It welcomed her with no love this time. Weakness, Essen felt at Bellow, and she understood. War support goes up, okay? I'm getting the sense that Essen might end up becoming one of our leader options, and she'll be, like, super vengeful. Whereas Amgalon will be all like, peace and forgiveness, like a hippie or something. I don't know. Maybe we go down that route? Maybe we'll let Essen take over. Could go for an advisor, by the way. Um, there are a few things that could be good here. I saw Dingbat Wallach, which is a great name. Political power and recruitable population factor. Considering I very badly need manpower, I could see that being helpful, yeah. And then as far as production, I don't think I need these bicycles. Go ahead and cancel that. Get some infantry equipment up and running. I do need some more support equipment. I'm trying to train up any additional troops I can here, though. Desperately need more manpower in the field. The White Rabbit's War. A war broke out on our borders. This time, it has little to do with us. In the hills of our west of our territory, two small factions have begun skirmishing in earnest. On one side stands a clan of hulking super mutants, the likes of which we recognize from our days in far-flung California. They are recent arrivals, but have kept to themselves so far. On the other are the Men of the Woods, strange folk who have been here long before us. They worship a white-horned rabbit and have been hostile to our scouts and settlers in the past. Like, what, a jagalope? Is that what it's called? Something like that. We are unsure what has sparked the conflict, but already the fighting has spread towards our holdings and it's causing a lot of problems. Great, we need to figure out what we want to do. So much for peace and quiet, this sucks. Sure, just as at a time when I can totally afford less production speed, that's what happens. So this leads to some new stuff here then. Amgalon's Pilgrimage, The Rebel, sure. Lessons of Darien, we get an event, research bonuses, doctrine included, and something that allows us to be better at fighting California. Well, that seems like a long-term goal. This is new, by the way. Approach the super mutants or approach the woods, so take a side. So, old ways or new Conet. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then one way or another, we get rid of the White Rabbit War. Settling down... Or infantry equipment and manpower. Huh. Uh... I guess we could go for Approach the Woods. Uh... I think I'm gonna have to kind of figure out what route I want to take. It looks like if I go down here to this next round of focuses, we can kind of see our three candidates. It's gonna be Amgalon with the Settle Down faction. Regis with the old ways, and sure enough, Essen with the new Conant. 
All right, so it's between one of these two. Which do I like? Well, at least on this side of things, it looks like it's a very diplomatic and tech-focused game where, yeah, we would be able to start building up some of our tech levels, support tech and exploitation tech and so on. Also, between both of these factions, we could create our own group, right? Our own faction called the Midnight Union. So if we want to create an alliance network, and there are a lot of ways of boosting said alliance network, this would be the way to go. And unsurprisingly, yeah, on the right-hand side, it looks like Essen would become the warrior queen of the Connet. And there actually is, like, raiding mechanics involved. We also, I think, can form our another faction, um, which is called the Fire Council. So we could still put together an alliance network. But this would also unlock tribal technology, specifically, which I've never messed with before. This would be a very different playstyle, and it could be kinda cool. And as for the old ways, this actually looks pretty decent. Uh, you go down this full path over here, and depending on whether you want to be particularly aggressive, you can do that. There's a whole load of claims that are gonna come out of it. Do you want to go down the route of, like, Genghis Khan, or... Do you want to kind of combine the ideas of Amgalon and our old ways and kind of find harmony between them? And that's an option as well, with like the followers of the Apocalypse. Um, I think that I've decided I'm going to go down Essen's route. So we're going to go for the new Connet, and now that I know that, we can go for Approach the Woods and try to resolve this event. I do like it how in this mod, though, there are a lot of different countries where you really can take very drastically different paths. I mean, there's already so much replayability in this mod. I mean, look how many nations there are now. I remember this mod was a lot smaller than this. Um, but yeah, then you take that and it's like, hey, some of these, by the way, you can play like two or three times and it's very different experiences. And it's like, well, dang, sure, let's just triple that replayability. Why not? A raid too far. There had been a raid in the night. News traveled fast and Amagalon with Essen riding behind raced out to inspect the damage. Uh, a steading was attacked and butchered. Okay, the people seemed to fare extremely worse. Their throats were cut and their bodies rearranged in positions as if it were a joke. There was a logo of the Saints, a gang on the other side of the woodlands. Amgalon was cold, not showing fury or disgust, but Essen was the picture of barely contained fury. Both had different thoughts on what to do. Ruminators. At blood on the border, weekly manpower goes down. Division attrition and war support. What, these guys over here with this really creepy, like, little, um, face? No, really? They're the ones who did this? Well, we're now gonna have a meeting in the woods. Essen marched into the cult leader's grove, where a bonfire burned bright enough for even her to see it clearly by. She was alone at the rabbit worshipper's insistence, and kept a hand near her axe in case things took a turn for the worst. They wouldn't take her down without a fight. From the shadows he came, the smell of blood, hide, and wild mushrooms preceding him. Skeeter the Raved, approaching her until he was uncomfortably close, swaddled in pelts and with a rack of antlers strapped to his back. Sun Khan wants to be friends, does she? Help us take back the holy hills from the giants. Being referred to as Sun Khan took her by surprise. She had no idea if the cult knew anything about her history as a sun gazer. She forced it from her mind, however, instead thinking back to just how many of the rabbit men she'd passed on the way to this meeting. It was many more than the Khans had estimated, which was concerning, but at least it validated her push to try and make allies of them. Finally, she responded, as long as the people of the rabbit will be friends to us in return. Narrowed eyes over a cheerless black-toothed smile was the response, followed by... Maybe, maybe. We have no weak friends or liar friends. You must prove your true strength. Challenge accepted! Should be getting attacked in just a couple hours, and... Well, where is it? There it is. All right, so we are now at war. Okay, so yeah, the plan here then is to push this way rapidly. Push this way rapidly. If we need to pin some units down, we can. I might need to send one more guy over here. That might have been the better way to go. If I could then encircle this group as well, that would be great. But let's start with something small like that. Perfect. All right. So these guys can't go anywhere. Then we are going to... Do I just try to make a bee, uh, bee line down over this way? I mean, we could. This still feels weird in that we can't do anything here. Oh, boy. Um, but if we can clear this up quickly, I can also hook down to the left. The alternative is we try going this way and then see if we can hook around on the highway and encircle two more units. And I think that's still the better way to go. 
And now that we have enough units to overcome their defense, we should see these guys burning down quickly. Good, 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 good. I do think this is going to be a kind of costly war, though, to be honest. We don't really have any manpower or equipment to spare. So it is what it is, but all right. Um, if we can hit targets like three at a time, honestly, that's the only way we're going to beat this. Yeah, we'll just have to be very careful with our flanking. All right, we could go for the follower doctorates. Stability, medical technology and stuff. I mean, yeah, that's all good. I might like going for the stability of Alone in the Mountains and stuff, too. Also, there's the pilgrimage, and then there's a the whole lessons thing. What's going to be the better way to go here? I do think we're supposed to go for a lot of cavalry on this particular uh, nation. Because I see here that there are things like the ways of lands and like horses and cavalry and stuff. And I think under Essen I saw, yeah, pretty horses. Strong steeds replaced with better horses. We might literally become like the Golden Horde or something here. This could be kind of interesting. Here's another group in circle that's not gonna be doing anything for at least a little bit. Just need to punch through this a little more. Actually, maybe we can just go for the kill here. Do you, do you think that's an option? Can we just go directly to Casper? How, how many victory points do you really have? There we go, boom! Now the real question is, can I take all of this land or not? I'm not gonna have the manpower to deal with um, any of the uprisings that will occur. So a puppet would be an alternative option just to keep ourselves stable, even though I very badly want all of the extra factories and stuff. Uh, I think I'm actually just gonna take the land. I think that the I think that the puppet could be the safer choice, but I'm like 60% sure that I saw a focus that would core like at least the Casper state, and if we can do that and get a core, everything else is something we can deal with. I really hope this is not the wrong call. All right, confirm, exit, done. Thank you, I take all the states. Please tell me I was right. Was it this one? Yes, we get a core, thank God. Okay, do that. But hey, this is a pretty good way of getting a fair bit of extra territory. Feel good about that. The meeting of idealists. Oh, it's the creepy smile, people. Elisaveta smiled across a tent, all brightness and cheer despite the situation. She was hopeful that everything would be sorted out soon and things could go back to normal. Amglon kept his own demeanor serious, but in truth found her positivity refreshing as they spoke. You must understand, the Khan's chief stated with a frown before continuing, my people will not be easily convinced to forgive or forget. They want vengeance. Of course they do. I mean, it makes sense is all. But we both think it would be better if less folks get killed, right? I've been told that the guys who did it got kicked out of the Saints already, and most of them are already dead. Archie cut them loose a few days ago. Amgalon sighed, relieved to hear it, before replying, if that is the case, maybe we really can come to some sort of an arrangement that will soothe my kin and give those who survive a chance at starting anew. They spoke for hours on end, and in the end, they did. I don't trust these people. I'm sorry, I'm just gonna say it. People who are overly positive for no particular reason, are either genuinely happy, and I'm envious, or they're on drugs, in which case, uh-oh, uh or they're planning something, shoot them. The point is, either way, I don't trust you. I don't trust you at all with your positive attitude. We need to take her down. And there's our core, beautiful. Before the still burning ashes of Baron August's manor stood Amgalon, the warmth of their war keeping the nightly frost from his skin. Though his silence would imply such a thing, the clicking and crackling of the embers brought him no peace. The Khans had traveled thousands of miles in search of Wyoming, a paradise land with supposed tall tales spun by the followers. Amgalon was the one who shepherded his people from Papa Khan, and brought them here. Though it was beautiful, and the land itself still rich in spite of nuclear calamity, this was the opposite of what he had hoped for. The Baron was a monster. This he could not dispute. Those under his boot made it clear enough that such a thing was inevitable. But it was still Amgalon who allowed more cons to die. The land may be safe now, but it shouldn't have been secured through these means. It was the exact thing he had hoped to take them away from, and yet now the children who were born along the way now knew the sorts of bloodshed firsthand. For a moment, he wondered if perhaps they'd been too greedy, that maybe they'd taken too much, and thus shook up the land and inspired war and murder in the hearts of the people. But ultimately, Amgalon settled on one conclusion. The Wastelanders will never be truly war-free. New Connet settling down. Okay, so this is just which one you want. We're going down New Connet. That is the route that I accepted, so we're going for it. Now we can go for matters of government. The Baron's daughter. We can gain some more states. Okay, I like that. And then also some new leaders and so on. Oh, good. Yeah, actually, if you go down this route, we can get a lot of states. 
We finished with the Baron's Daughter focus. Samglon stepped out of the old Casper Jail, home once to a number of largely innocent but unlucky folks. Blah, blah, blah. Flames consumed the Bailey home and the Baron himself. The daughter surrendered. They had called for her to be killed on the spot, but instead they decided to throw her in prison. Good morning, Amgalan. I've been looking forward to meeting you in less violent conditions. You've got fair enough reason to hold me here. I'm the child of your enemy, after all. But I want you to know that I can do a lot more for you if given my freedom. I know the families of the Eerie better than anyone, their strengths and even their weaknesses. And I can encourage their cooperation with you. With my help, peace and prosperity will return quicker. And isn't that what we all want? Uh-huh. All right, I'll give you my answer tomorrow. We get another event, part two. There we go. Later that day, Amgalon called to his tent Ezekiel, former agent of the Baron who'd been imprisoned. The two met when under the old con had released most of the prisoners and quickly rebuilt a rapport in the days since. Let's see. You know her better than anyone else, I suspect, and I value your opinion. What should be done with her? Smartest move is to leave her in her cell, if I'm honest with you. I don't want to throw any wool over your eyes. She's a sneaky one, and it's a bit of a mean streak. She's also smart as a whip, though, and knows everything about the Eerie and what knows the war is over. She can do what she says. I'm also plumb fond of her boss, and I'm more than willing to keep her penned in and behaving if you'll give her the chance. So, we could go for she's too dangerous, or she'll get a chance. Stability goes down, compliance goes up. 10% compliance gain is actually pretty good. That's the thing. I don't like losing stability, but it's really hard to get compliance growth. I'm gonna go for it. Because while this is going to hurt me in the short term, that compliance growth could support me building a massive empire in the mid and the late game and mostly keep it under control and get a lot of benefits. It's not going to pay off for a while, but later on could be amazing. Let's see what we can do as far as the government of this area. Let's see. Amglon and Essen sit in a small overlook. You think it is foolish, do you not? He asked Essen, holding his journal close to heart. She grunted, they crave a strong hand, not a strong system. A strong hand can come from within just as much as without. We don't need a despot or a sole progenitor. The cons have grown too large for such simplicity. Essen grumbled at that for a moment. Do you think they feel that way? Some do, some do not, but still they chose to listen to me. Here we can forge an actual future for our people, the sort of governments of the West do. With the Baron gone, we can afford some room to grow. Hmm. Try not to break your own people in your hopes then, follower, she said, taking a seat by him. Right, so, do we want to go for settling down or new conant? Still, Essen knew the cons would never be an NCR. See, that's the thing, is I kind of agree. I don't think that they're ever going to be an NCR. I just don't think that's going to be a thing. So let's go ahead and put out the fire, so to speak. Try to get Riverton under control. Then we'll worry about things like the Wyoming gunsmiths, and then we can go for things like Saunders Ranch. Get cores on all the Terry I just conquered, and then, let's see, development can happen in Casper, civilian workshops, and we can decide whether we want to become a true Connet leader with some fun stuff. The thing is about this, with the Con of Cons, does this apply to whoever is currently your leader? Would it make more sense to hold off on doing this later when Essen is in charge? Probably. What else do we have to look forward to down here? More research slots are nice. Conant Tides. Compliance growth again. Stack that up, 20% total. That'd be huge. All right, all that's pretty solid. Uh, we'll also be able to start getting some additional technology here pretty soon as far as, like, bikes, though I might stick around with horses, but still, that's not terrible for us. Intermediate industrial tech? Yep, that's going to be great. Bikers of the modern wasteland. See, that's the thing, is if I was going to go down kind of like an old ways uh, approach in this game, I kind of want to go full-on Mad Max style, you know? Everyone in, like, wasteland cars and motorcycles and stuff. Forget the horses. Everyone just has, like, junk they're riding around and yelling, WITNESS ME! Anyway, I feel like this is probably a good place for us to end things here, but obviously there's a ways to go. We're gonna get stronger. This is a slow start, but it's getting there. And honestly, it is far better to have a slow start where I can turn a lot of this territory into cores than to instead, um, you know conquer land and then have to put it down over a long period of time and drain away your entire economy and military that is far worse so this kind of works for me and in the meantime we're figuring out our internal stability issues we're getting somewhere i do still want to try to help the um people of the rabbit get rid of the giants but 
that'll have to wait a little bit longer. Thank you all for much for watching, and thank you to the devs once again for getting me early access. I'm very curious what is in store for us with the Northern Cons. Keep an eye out for an update for 5.0. As soon as I know a day, I'll be more than happy to let you guys know. Otherwise, hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, because you want to find that future content, right? Hit the notify bell while you're at it. And I will see you guys next time.